Welcome to our next tutorial of Croftland YouTube channel. We're going to have a discussion of IGCC and Excel Mathematics 1H and how you're supposed to approach that kind of questions as you are preparing for your exams. And if you're new to Croftland YouTube channel, consider subscribing so that anytime I'm going to upload the further tutorials, you'll be notified. In Profland YouTube channel, we do math, physics and math. Uh, stretching up to a level pure math and further pure math so if you are at any given level profland youtube channel we have a great uh, content that is coming ahead so if you are preparing for your igcse ed excel paper 1h we are going to have a discussion on possible questions that you can ask and previous questions that have been asked in previous exams so that you can be able to have a look at how questions are usually asked. This is a paper that was done recently, and we can see the first question was testing on the first question was testing on a, a sequence and series, and we are having an arithmetic sequence which is having the first term one, second term four, third term seven, and the fourth term ten. We are supposed to write an expression of nth term. So in coming exams, you may be asked to write an expression for nth term. And in order to uh, respond to that, you can see here, we have the first term as A and the common difference is denoted by D. So from 1 to 4, we need to add 3. From 4 to 7, we need to add 3. From 7 to 10, we need to add 3. So you can see now the common difference is 3. And you can be able to write that into the end term formula, whereby a is replaced with one, which is because of the first term, and d is three. Then, if you simplify, you are going to the equivalent to three n minus two as the end term. Now, if you are given an end term like this, for instance, five n plus seventeen, in order to get get it a given term. For instance, term number 2, you replace n with 2 times 5 plus 7. But in this question, <clears throat> we were supposed to find the 12th term, and the 12th term is going to be 5 times 12 plus 17, which is going to translate to 77, because 5 times 12 uh, is giving us what? That's giving us 60 plus 17, that gives us 77. Moving to the next question that you can be asked and all that was tested here. We have 450 students were asked how they traveled to school on Monday. Each student walked, um, all traveled by bus, all traveled by car, all traveled by bicycle. Each student used just one method to travel. So if you are among these students, which method do you use? Are you uh, the one who walks? Are you the one who uses this? Are you the one who use a personal car or a bicycle and then you park uh, next to the that park, parking area or next to the gate as you are about to leave to school? So we are supposed to work out many students travel by car. So in order to work out that question, something that you need to remember here is that all the probabilities add up to add up to one. So meaning if you add 0 0.2 plus x plus 2x plus 0 0.26 must give you 1. Then in, all, in that way, we are able to find the value of x. But because we are working out how many students travel by car, we are going to say 1.8 times 2 so that we get 0 0.36 because this was 2x. And we can say 1 is equal to 450 for the student. What about 0 0.36? Cross multiply and you get the answer in that case to be 100. And the next question is uh, how to find the HCF, and that is highest common factor. And uh, the method I usually uh, prefer is this: you write, you list the numbers here, seventy-two and one hundred eight. You ask an, uh, yourself which number divides seventy-two and one hundred eight without giving a remainder. Six a uh, twelve, which goes to seventy-two six times. Twelve goes to one hundred eight nine times. Six and nine are, is um, are divisible by three without getting any remainder. That is going to be uh, to six goes two times to nine three times. Now we stop here because there's no number that we divide these two numbers without 
Tinder. So our HCF is going to be 12 times 3, which is 36. In the event you are going to be asked about LCM, then whenever you have reached to 2 and 3, you can proceed. 2 goes to 12 once, to 2 once, and 2 goes to 3. No divis 3 is not divisible by 2, so you take 3 down. And at this point also you take uh, 3, and then the final answer becomes 12 times 3 times 2 times 3 becomes 216, and that is the LCM. So if you are asked HCF and LCM, this is what you are supposed to do. We are moving to the next part here, whereby we are told Eva record, uh, records the number of kilometers she, she drives each month. In April, Eva, that is Ava, drove 943 kilometers. And this 943 kilometers is just 15% more than the number of kilometers she drove in March. So we can say 943 kilometers is equal to 115 because we are told 15 more than. So we assume that on March it was 100%. If it's 15 more than, then we are going to say 943 is equal to 115. Now we ask ourselves, what about 100%? So that we can be able to get the uh, the, 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 the um, the kilometers that were uh, that uh, Ava drove in the month of March, and if you work it out, you are going to get uh, nothing other than 820 kilometers. If you are finding value from this particular video, consider subscribing so that end time we are going to upload other tutorials, you'll be notified. Moving to the next question here, we are talking about a regular pentagon. And then we were expected to work out the size of an FED, Optus FED. So the first thing that I did, I extended a line right from right from A all the way to E, this red line. Then I know this is a straight line, then it's gonna have how many degrees? 180 degrees. Then 90, 180 minus 96, I got 94. So meaning that uh, angle, this angle here that I've labeled in blue give me 94 but we know angles uh, exterior angles of a polygon is given by 360 divided by the number of sides and this is what this was a pentagon five sides so 360 divided by 5 gives me 72 which is the exterior angle uh, here then since we were working we we're working f e d then we can add 94 plus 72 which has which has to give us 106 there, we transfer it down there just to make the examiner happy. Moving to the next question, Prof. Land prepared for us. We are supposed to simplify, expand and simplify. So if we are having this, it's remember, is every, every, everything that we have, the two terms we have here multiply to everything that we have in the bracket. Yeah, so meaning that uh, we are going to have m times uh, m minus 8. 5 times m minus 8. If you multiply m times m, we give you m squared. m times negative 8 will give us negative 8m. m times m gives us 5m. And then this gives us negative 40. And we put the like terms together. We're going to get m squared minus 3m minus 40 as the final answer at that given point. The next question that we're asking in part B also here is uh, to solve an equation. And then uh, remember, we need to multiply all two to get rid of the fraction here times three both sides. That's exactly what I did. And when I simplified, I got 9n minus 5n. Yeah, because the first thing we did, if you multiply here, you're going to get 9n minus 12. And this becomes 5n plus 6. Then you put the like terms together. So I had to take this 5 here. I take this 12. And we say that n time you take a negative a number a number over the equal sign or under the equal sign or even if you take through this space here the sign of the number must change for instance uh, we are having 12 taken on the other side it must be positive 12 and uh, 5n taken on the other side of the equal sign it becomes negative 5n so those are the things that you have to remember if you want to store that grade 9 then if you work it out you are going to get your answer as 9 over 2 which is equivalent to 4.5. And uh, since this was a fractional question, that's why you can see I'm giving my answer as a fraction. 
Uh, then we have set to now a cylinder is placed on a table and then we are told the volume of the cylinder is 1575 cm cubic. The force exerted by the cylinder on the table is 84 newtons. Remember pressure equals to force over area. We are supposed to work out the pressure exerted to the uh, due to the cylinder. In order to work out pressure, we need to know the area of the base. And the area of the base, remember, volume is base area times height. So since we have the volume, we can be able to find the base area by dividing the volume by the height that was provided here, which is 21. And 1575 divided by 21 gives us a whooping 75 centimeter square. Then for us to work out pressure is the force divided by the area which gives us 1.12 newton per centimeter square. You need also to know how to work with um, standard form numbers in standard form, expressing ordinary numbers to standard form, or expressing uh, numbers in standard form to ordinary numbers. So you can see we are having 3.5 times 10 to the power 7. So meaning this is... Um, 3.5 times 7, 1 and 7 zeros, but 1 zero will be cancelled by this decimal point we have here. We end up having 35 million. In 2020, Japan produced 67, that is uh, 6 million 780,000 more tons of rice than Argentina. So Argentina is 8.2 times 10 to the power 5. So meaning we are going to write this number in standard form. So that we can be able to add them together. So I have 6.78 times 10 to the power 6. And then uh, since this, is, this was power 5, I had to move this decimal backwards so that I can have the same uh, powers here on 10. Then I can add 6.78 plus 0 0.82, uh, which gives me now 7.6 times 10 to the power 6 shown there. All right, the next part question here is, uh, it's you to understand n number raised to power zero is one, and also the loss of indices when two numbers with the same base are multiplied, you add the powers. So this would be nine plus negative three, which is going to be six. Eh? And six, a y raised to power six is equal to y raised to power n. Since the bases are the same, we can see now the powers are also equal, which is uh, n equals to six. And something else also you need to remember when there is a power and there is a bracket here, all the numbers which are inside this bracket are going to be affected by the power. So it will be x raised to power n, y raised to power n. And in including 5 here, 5 is going to be raised to power 3. But a raised to power 4, you are going to multiply 3 and that becomes 5 raised to power 3 becomes 125. a raised to power 4 becomes a raised to power 12 because there is 3 times 4. And the C is raised to power 2, so it will be 3 times 2, and that becomes 6. Uh, we are supposed to work out the total cost of the wood uh, was, that was needed. But remember, this is a roof. Remember, perimeter is distance around. But this is a roof where, which required this part, this part, this part, which is the, uh, the base of 12 meters, and the height here. So which means that we need to find the height using Pythagoras theorem. So CM is 9 squared minus 6 squared. Where is 6 squared coming, six coming from? A half of AB is 6. So 9 squared minus 6 squared, you find the squared will give you CM. Then you work out the total length, 12, uh, 12 plus 9 plus this 9, and then we are going to add also the height we give. Uh, pro approximately 7, <clears throat> the total length becomes 37. But the per meter, uh, each meter was costing 21.5, so meaning the total value, total cost is going to be 37 times 21.5, which translates to 795.5 euros. 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 To factorize this, you need to multiply the coefficient of y squared to the last term to get negative 24. But the middle uh, product, uh, the sum, the middle term is negative 5. 
So you are going to ask yourself, product is negative 4, 24, and the sum is negative 5. Which two numbers can you, can you add? You get negative 5, but if you multiply them, you get negative 24. The two numbers are negative 8 and 3. Then you are going to say 6y squared minus 8y plus 3y minus 4. You are writing these two terms. You are writing negative 5y in terms of negative. 8 and 3. That's why I'm having negative 8y plus 3y. If you add them, you are going to get 5. Now, I want you to remember that um, if uh, we are having this, we need to group this 2 and this 2, then we factor out what's called. I factored out 2y, so I remain 3y minus 4. I factored 1 here, I remain 3y minus 4. You can see this and this are common. If Factor out, you are going to have 3y minus 4 into y plus 1 as the final answer. For you to express as a single fraction, what do you need? You need to multiply this term and this term. And then you are going to get 12 squared. And then you cross multiply butterfly method. This multiplied there and this multiplied here. So here we are having an addition sign. It's just considered addition that's why we are having it here so we shall have 3x into 2x plus 1 and then 4x into 7 minus 5x if you simplify it you are going to get 31x minus 14x squared over 12x squared but you can factor x out because x is here x is here and x is here then we can be able to cancel out our final terms at 1 minus 14x over 12x. Our final answer in that case. If you are getting value from this particular video, consider subscribing so that anytime I'm going to upload the, uh, the second part, you'll be notified. Check in the description uh, for the link for part two. Thank you.